G'day everyone, just gonna be showing you real quickly how to make uh, a ground shadow or a platforming shadow that you might see in um, something sort of reminiscent of like a PlayStation uh, 1 platforming game where there's always a shadow right beneath the player to help with platforming, help you line up jumps to see if it sort of works differently to the regular shadow which you can see right next to it. Um, I didn't know the technical name for it, but apparently it's called a ground shadow or a player shadow. Uh, but we can set it up pretty easily uh, without even using any code at all, or minimal code. Uh, the only thing uh, code-wise I'm using here is just to make it uh, a little bit smaller as we get away from it. Um, or as we, we're further away from it. Let's get into it. Cool, so I've just got a little scene here. Um, all it's got is a couple little CSG boxes. Uh, to sort of work as our stand-in platforms uh, for now, and a grass texture for the ground, uh, a world environment, and a uh, directional light. So what we're going to do now is just create the player real quick. So we'll just set up a 3D scene, I'll call it player, we'll save it into scenes as player, um, and now we, we want to look at something. So we'll add the mesh instance, make it a capsule, obviously, or a bean whatever you prefer to call it, 0 0.25, 1.8. Uh, we can make this small if we want. Um, we need to lift it up off the ground, so 0 0.9 is half of 1.8, obviously the way that that's going to work. Now we need to add our collider. So, uh, collider, or a collision shape, 3D rather. And we're just going to do the same for that. Capsule shape, 0 0.25. 1.8 and we're going to put it 0 0.9 meters above the ground. Now you're going to get an error here because uh, collision shape doesn't just work with a node, it has to be attached to some sort of um, physics body. So we're going to change the type to a uh, character body 3D. And then from there uh, you'll see that that error message goes away. So We've got to create a script for it just real quickly, but it's okay, we don't really need to do any typing. Um, we've got attach script, and make sure that this template is selected. Character, body 3D, basic movement. Create, and then you get given this sort of boilerplate code. Just save that real quick. <clears throat> We're going to go back to the 3D. Uh, we're just going to plot the character in the scene, we'll have a look at what that looks like. So, over here, we're going to go find the... Player scene, this should actually be in scenes, I don't know why that didn't save in scenes. And then this, if we had a scripts folder, I would put that in there too, but we're just going to drag that into the scene. We can stick it anywhere we want, or we can do what I do, which is just put it there so we can make sure the transformation is at 000. zero, zero. Uh, it just makes things nice. So we're going to load that up, let's see what that looks like. Of course, we don't have a camera, so we can't see anything. I'm just going to attach a camera real quickly to the player here. And while it's selected, I'm going to roughly line it up. doesn't need to be fully lined up. And then I'm going to hit Control-Alt-M. And that's going to put the camera right where we were looking. So now we're going to run it again. It should just automatically default to this one. And now when we left, right, and jump, we sort of have a character. But obviously when it comes to these sort of platforms over here, it's kind of hard to, to, to judge whether you're over them or not. And that's where the, the, the contact or the ground shadow sort of comes in handy. So what we're going to do, and this is the fun part because we don't use any code. So we go into the player scene. We're going to add a spring arm 3D. We're going to transform it, uh, I think it's 90 degrees we want to go. Uh, just on the x-axis we'll do. We're just going to... Uh, weird, it's over there for some reason. So we'll just make sure that everything here is at zero, zero, zero. That's interesting that that put that there. Position, oh right, so I put in 90 meters instead of 90 degrees, do it. Cool, so we just want that little helper gizmo to be pointing uh, towards the ground. So attached to that, we want to add a decal. Then inside of that decal, well, first of all, we're going to set this to 1 meter by, let's say, 0 0.2. And, okay, so this is this is messing around. I see how this works. So 0 0.2 here. 
No, we want one there. 0 0.2 here because we rotated this. No, not because it's rotated. What's going on? X and Y. Uh, decals are a bit strange. I can't remember which way they point out. It might actually be in the Z direction. So we're going to have to look out for that. But anyway, we're going to go into the textures. We'll debug, we'll debug that later. Um, I'm going to choose gradient texture 2D. Going to click in there, go to fill, change that to radial. So we're going to get our circle finally. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Open up the gradient. First thing we want to do is click on this white, <clears throat> change that to black, and then change it to transparent. So there's a difference between white transparent and black transparent um, when you're using gradients, and that's the in between, the interpolation in between. It just it's a lot cleaner if. Uh, it, you'll see what I mean. It, it gets weird with the greys. Um, I might grab it about... Uh, we'll just do the whole circle, whatever. I'm going to pull it out to around here. So we're making our shadow right now. Uh, and we might have to edit that later, but it doesn't really matter. We'll see. So inside the decal, we're going to need to set um, a coal mask. So <clears throat> just really quickly... The mesh instance 3D here that we're using for the player uh, is on layer 1, but so is our background. So if you look at any of these uh, objects here, you can see that it's on visibility or visual instance 3D, it's on layer 1. So when you don't have a layer selected, it doesn't display anything. So we're going to keep all of the background on layer 1. So we can also name it once by going edit layer names and typing world here. And then obviously, yeah, we're going to have our player on layer 2. And this is the way the decal is going to work. It's going to project onto the ground. You can see it right here, but not onto the player. So right now you can see it sort of projecting onto the player. So we're going to go back over to here, change this to visual layer 2. Make sure this is set to not transmit to layer 2. So that's what the cull mask mean, meaning cull, get rid of and mask to basically get rid of as well. So we're going to turn that off and we're going to see that contact shadow, that decal, not transmit onto the player, which is not what we want. We're not trying to make a contact shadow, we're trying to make a ground shadow. And so we can already see that sort of coming along. The beauty of using a spring arm is as we move it, it should spring arm. So I think we've actually... I might have to have the game running for that to work, actually. So spring arm... Make sure it's in the right direction, negative 90. Uh, what's the distance? Spring length, we're going to make that 2 meters. 1 meter is a little bit short. Make that as long as you want. Um, and we can also have like a sort of fade out I think effect in the decal uh, if you want to stretch it vertically. Um, but you sort of need to watch out doing that. You know, you'll kind of get shadows like on walls, which is kind of cool bit retro but you'll also get shadows underneath platforms and, and weird stuff like that so I try to keep mine kind of skinny but we might need to work on this size cool so now that that's done we're gonna run the game real quick and see what it looks like so <laughs> I mean it's kind of working right we've got the spring arm working it's finding the ground uh, but we're having an issue here with our textures and so we're gonna go back to what I was saying before about how sometimes this stuff messes around. You can also see while I'm on the platform, it's actually pushing through the platform and detecting what's underneath it onto the ground. And I'll show you how to fix that as well. So first we're going to fix that little issue. By going to the player, we're just going to move the spring arm up just the tiniest little bit. So we're going to move it up about 10 centimeters up just to be, yeah, we'll move it to 0 0.05 five centimeters up just a little bit <clears throat> and then here with the shape we're going to make it a sphere shape I'm going to make that about 10 centimeters as well so now when we run it we should have those issues go away because we've moved it up slightly uh, but also yeah we can see that it's uh, not doing oh okay so I've changed the spring length right I've messed up I'm supposed to change this, the radius here, to 0 0.1. The spring length, we need to keep at 2 meters. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of a bug out. A little bit of a bug out. Maybe we can't use a sphere. 
maybe it's going through the ground. What if you use like 0.2? What if we just get rid of it entirely? Yeah, screw it. We'll just get rid of it entirely for now. So that's like a shape cast. So instead of just using like a regular ray cast, it'll actually put a collision shape on the end of that ray cast and use that. So sometimes you get a little bit more of a, a 3D dimensional collision out of it, which is really cool. Uh, but we're just going to turn it off now. So the issue with why it's looking square at the moment is because like I said before, I get really confused at which way these decals point. So I'm pretty sure I've messed up. We've just got to flip this 90 degrees. I'm going to change this to 1 and that to 0 0.2. And that should have fixed it up. Yeah, okay, so that has fixed it up. We've got the circle back and now I'll show you real quick. So we're going to do this at the same time how we can make that look more circular. So we're going to go back to this shape. You can already see it here. It's, it's kind of squarish. So we can pull that in. And you see our squares go away. So this point right here, I mean, not the, the, the diagonals is what's going to make these uh, sort of edges popped up. But if you can sort of 0 0.5, this should actually be the perfect spot right here, mathematically for it to be a perfect circle. But you can bring it in a little bit further as well. You can play around with that gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, like I'm not happy with that gradient. It looks very strange. It doesn't look very retro. So I'm just going to make it look a little bit more shadowy by just pulling the colors in of this gradient. So depending on how big your player is and visually what you want it to look like, you know, I could even add an extra step in here for this. Just turn it down a little bit. Um, maybe not that much, but just a little bit. And then this will step it down a little bit more as well. Cool. And then add like a little bit more girth to it. There we go. So that looks kind of cool. And now while I'm platforming, jumping around, I can see where I'm about to land before it happens, which is pretty much the idea. I mean, it's ideal for if you're making like a, a retro PS1, uh, Nintendo 64 style platformer, this is exactly the sort of thing that you're going to want to put in there. Um, and you can see it gets to a distance and it'll fade away. And that is because of the length of the spring arm. So if you increase that length or if you make the, like I said before, the decal actually taller, you're going to going to sort of push out that distance of when it actually disappears. Um, you see now I, I can't actually get it to disappear uh, due to the height. Cool, so <clears throat> the next thing that I would do is with a game like this you kind of want to make that circle smaller as you get higher up just to show that you're further away from the ground because it, it looks kind of realistic, I mean unrealistic, right? Like you're just kind of projecting this uh, circle to the ground here. So we're going to do real quick is we're going to edit our player script to handle that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to pull the spring arm in. We want to pull the decal in. Uh, this is really, really easy right here. I'm not, I'm not doing anything too crazy. Uh, okay, what do we need to figure out? We're going to figure out the maximum length. So essentially, we need to get this value here, which is the spring length. So what we're going to do var uh, max spring length. Uh, float and then in our ready function sometimes it, it, it it's kind of easy to do it on ready here but I just I don't like to do it we'll set it up uh, the way that we know how so funk let's get this boilerplate code in here ready max spring length equals our spring arm 3d dot spring length. Cool. So that's not a function or anything. We don't call it. We could call get length, but we're not changing it, so it's fine. Um, and this should work fine anyway. <clears throat> Once we have that, we can figure out the distance between the player and its shadow, essentially. And then we can work out a kind of uh, scale on that. But we, we're just doing it through the spring arm. So it's a very efficient way to do it. I mean, you could, you could try and like raycast it or something like that, but at this point, there's, there's no real point. You've got all the information here that you uh, that you need. So, we go back to the script. We've got the spring length, and then what we want to do. I don't need to move the slide. It doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll just do it in the physics process. Uh, we'll go var, new scale, 
Actually, screw it. We'll do it in process. Funk process. By new scale. So that's float. Equals. Spring arm 3D. Dot. Get hit length. And so that's actually finding out how far that distance is. Between the player and the ground. More or less. New scale equals 1.0. Take away. New scale. So this is just to invert it. New scale equals clamp. Uh, new scale. 0, 0.0. Uh, 1.0. So we're going to clamp it as well. The reason we do this is because it's kind of easy mathematically to make it bigger. Um... The further away it is, uh, and smaller, the closer it is to you. So we've just got to do a little bit of inverting here, um, just so we can avoid like having infinities or like absolute zero. I mean, absolute zero is fine, but we can't have an infinity. We need to have a maximum of one, essentially, and a minimum of zero is what we're trying to do here. So then we go to the decal. We're going to set the size equals vector three. So we're going to set new scale for the x, one for the y because we don't want to change the height of it, and then new scale for the z. So if we run that, it should just work like that. So you can see how far away it is. Now, because this is all depends on the spring arm length, if we change that spring arm length distance, say to 5 meters, we come back here, okay, we'll load that back up. See, the thing is, the maximum spring length, we are only getting one time in the ready function. So I go and change that spring length. It's not going to update the effect that we're going for. And so what I could do is I could put this down here in process to figure it out every frame. But that's not thinking with portals. It's not optimized. Not for this. So we just do it one time. We just do it one time. Why are you not working? <laughs> Alright, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can change this one here to make sure that it doesn't scale uh, the entire way down uh, to zero, basically. So if we change that to, like, 0 0.3, uh, then we're going to get just a little sort of dot remaining, uh, like a third of the uh, the size. We can see it sort of slipping down the sides of walls and stuff like that, uh, which is cool, just like that. And that's because of the height of the decal. So if we come back here and we change this... We're going to get, like, differences in uh, height of, like, how these things work. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's going to push down further and, yeah, essentially do a lot more weird stuff. So, anyway, that's basically it. I hope you found it useful. Uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe, follow, uh, support me directly by checking out Unaccessible on Steam. Let's go check it out right now. Unaccessible on Steam. It's just come out. Love it. Ooh, 34 positive. Damn, that's that's cool. Look at this. Everybody loves it. So, yeah, check it out. Support me directly. Fucking make sure to subscribe. Cheers.